hi everyone you're welcome back to my channel my name is nancy and if you're new to my channel kindly subscribe share and like my videos and also put on your notification bell to be notified when i upload new tutorials so in today's tutorial i'll be showing you how to make a simple drip top without using the splash and spread method so this tutorial was requested by a lot of subscribers after i posted a tutorial on how to make a straight skirt with a side flounce so the top I used in working that skirt in that tutorial is what we are going to be working on today. And these are the measurements I'll be working with. The amount of fabric I used is just one yard and the name of the fabric is called Lycra. So the reason I decided to use a spandex for this top is because it stretches in both directions. Which should be very easy for us to work with since it won't be needing a zipper. So just make sure that whatever fabric you are using stretches in both directions. For example, you can use the lycra fabric, the velvet fabric and the spandex fabric. Just make sure that it stretches in both sides. The first step is to fold the fabric into two. The next step is to mark the starting line. The next step is to mark the length of the top. The length of the top is 20 inches. I'll be adding 1 inch to an allowance to the end and that will make it 21 inches altogether. The next line is the armhole line. Which is gotten by dividing the ammo circumference by 2. The ammo circumference is 14 inches. Divided by 2, I have 7 inches. So this is the shoulder line, the bust line and the full length of the top. The next step is to mark the shoulder measurements. A shoulder measurement is 14 inches. I divided it by 2, which made it 7 inches. So I marked 7 inches on the shoulder line. For the neck width of the top, I'll be marking 3.5 inches. To get the slant shoulder, I'll mark 1 inch below the shoulder measurements to connect it to the neck width. Since this is the back piece of the blouse, I'll be marking 1 inch as a neck depth. Now I'll connect the neck width to the neck depth as shown. The next step is to extend the tip of the shoulder line straight down to the bust line as shown. Now I placed my tape on the vertical line to mark the midpoint. To get the ammo curve, you connect the midpoint to the bust line as shown. The next step is to place the bust circumference on the bust line. A bust circumference divided by 4 is 8.5 inches plus half an inch swing allowance because the fabric is very stretchy. On the M line, I'll also mark the bust circumference with the sewing allowance included, which is 8.5 and half inch sewing allowance to the side. To connect the two points together, Obviously, you can see that I didn't work with the waist circumference and the hip circumference because it is not needed for this particular style. Now, I'm going to cut the back piece out. And before cutting out the slant shoulder, I need to add about half an inch above the line I marked for the slant shoulder. So that will be sewing allowance to attach the front piece to the back piece. And the reason why the waist and the hip circumference wasn't needed is because the fabric is very stretchy. And if you try to use the hip or the waist circumference, it will affect the whole fitting. So it's better you just work with your bust circumference. Now to get the front piece of the blouse, I am supposed to fold the fabric into two. But because I'm using a leftover fabric, it won't be enough for me to work with. So what I just did was to place the back piece on a single fabric cut out one side of the front piece first all right for us to be able to achieve a butterfly twist 
there has to be a joining in the center front of the blouse to achieve a joining in the center front of the blouse i'm just going to mark half an inch by the side of the center back as shown so this half inch i marked will be a joining in the center front of the blouse the next step is to mark the neck depth for the center front of the blouse so i chucked the neck width and i marked four inches as the neck depth of the blouse now i'll connect the neck depth to the neck width as shown to form a round neckline all right so we've gotten the neckline for the front piece so the next step is on how to get the butterfly twist for the butterfly twist to we'll be working with the standard measurement the next step is to place your tape vertically above the end of the center front to mark four inches and i'll place my tape horizontally on the m line to mark four inches the next step is to place your tape horizontally on the m line to mark the distance between these points and the side of the blouse so i have six inches so this remaining six inches i got at this side is not a standard measurement that's the reason why i said that four inches i marked vertically and horizontally should be the standard measurements why this six inches i just got now is like a new measurement because you might not be working with the same bust measurements as mine the next step is to place your tape on this angle to replace the six inches i marked all right i just replaced the six inches because that was what i got from the side since we marked the distance between these two points to be four inches this simply means that at the tip of the extension i'll mark four inches to connect the two points together And I also mark four inches since the distance between the points on the M and the center point is four inches to connect the two points together. The next step is to connect the three points together. All right, guys, so this is the extension that would help in forming the butterfly twist. The next step is to cut out the front piece. all right guys so this is the front piece and the back piece remember that the front piece i worked with was a single fabric now i have to place this on my fabric to cut the second part which i did already so i have two separate pieces for the front part of the blouse all right so let's get started with the sewing this is the front piece of the blouse and the first step is to take this to your sewing machine to sew the center front making sure that you stitch it to stop at this point so I have stitched the center front. The next step is to spread out the front piece. The next step is to secure the extension itself. To achieve this, I'll fold one of the extension into two as shown. And at this point where the center front seems stopped, I'm going to just mark one inch away from there you can see that i chopped it i marked one inch away from that point now from this point i'm going to secure it straight down to the end of the extension the next step is to also fold the other side of the extension into two
and i will also mark one inch away from this point and from this point i will make a straight stitch down to the end of the extension i also made sure i pinned the extensions together so that i can easily secure the extension accurately all right so after securing the extension this is how it should look like and this is the right side of the fabric so let's say that this extension is actually the waistband for the front piece so the next step is to attach the side of the extension on the waistline as shown but before doing this make sure that you lift one part of the extension so that you can place the opposite side of the extension on the waistline as shown so what i did here is very simple i placed the left part of the band on the right part of the waistline now i'll take this to my sewing machine to stitch the extension on the waistline making sure that i stop at this point where i created the one inch spacing initially so after stitching this is how it should look like the next step is to place the right side of the extension on the left part of the waistline so the one inch spacing we did initially isn't just an assumption it was actually done to create this little o which is at the center front of the blouse the next step is to pass the extension into the o now i'm going to place the extension directly on the waistline of the left part to stitch it together by half inch all right so i've stitched them together so obviously you can see that the extension actually looks like a waistband and since this is a butterfly twist the joining shouldn't be showing at all this is the best way to make the joining invisible the next step is to get the midpoint of the waistband now i'll place my tip on the waistband to get the midpoint the wideness of the waistband is three inches this simply means that the midpoint is 1.5 inches i'll also mark the midpoint of the other side of the waistband so it's 3 inches divided by 2. I have 1.5 inches. The next step is to mark 1 inch above the waistband. So I'll place my tape on the waistband line to mark 1 inch above that line. After getting these two points, I'll place the lower points on the upper points as shown to pin it together. I'll do the same for the other side. The next step is to take this front piece of the sewing machine to stitch on the sides just to secure this folded waistband. So this is the final outcome of the butterfly twist. Also take note that after making the butterfly twist, the front piece will be a bit smaller than the back piece. But I'll show you how to make it equal. We are done with the front piece. The next step is to work on the back piece. The first thing to do on the back piece is to secure the aim of the back piece by folding it half an inch in and further folding it in by half an inch. After folding the aim of the back piece, the next step is to fold the back piece into two. Recall that I said that the front piece will be smaller than the back piece because of the butterfly twist, which is on the front piece. So what you are going to do next is to make sure you fold the front piece into two to place it directly on the back piece. Now what you do next is to shape the side of the back piece to fit the front piece. Now, the sides of both the front piece and the back piece is equal. 
after trimming this won't alter the measurements because initially you didn't even work with the waist circumference and the hip circumference Now I'll place the front piece on the back piece. To secure the shoulders by half an inch. The next step is to secure the sides of the blouse by half inch. After securing the side, you should turn this to the right side of the fabric. The next step is to fix the neckband. To achieve this, I'll place my tape on the neckline to measure the neck circumference. Now I placed my tape on the center front of the neckline to take the measurement. And all together, I have 21 inches. The wideness of the neckband I'll be working with is 2 inches. And since the neck circumference is 21 inches, I'll add half inch sewing allowance to that, and that will make it 21.5 inches. The next step is to fold the band into two to secure the side by half inch. After I folded the band and secured the side by half inch, the next step is to fold the band this way. The next step is to attach the neckband to the neckline of the blouse. After I attached the neckband to the neckline, I also made sure that I weaved the seam allowance. So if you have been following up with my tutorials, you should be able to make a straight sleeve. And the final step is to attach the sleeve to the armhole of the blouse. Alright guys, thanks for watching to the very end. I hope this tutorial was helpful and with this tutorial, you should be able to make a butterfly twist blouse. If you are new to my channel, kindly subscribe, share and like my videos.